Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this past week we had the release of iOS 16.2 Beta 3, along with some other features, and we're finally at the point where we're starting to look more stable. iOS 16.1.1 has been out for a couple weeks at this point, but that doesn't mean it's bug-free. This is the weekly iOS features follow-up and experience video we've been doing for many years on this channel, but I might be changing that up a bit in the future. We'll talk more about that later. But in this video, we'll cover the new features on iOS 16.2. 2 beta 3 that I wasn't able to find initially in the first video of what's new. Also, we'll talk about bugs that Apple's actually fixed that I've learned since black Friday sales, why you should buy the iPhone 14 pro now while you can also iOS 16.2's next beta and final release, the overall experience. And then we'll take a look at some of your comments based off that YouTube community poll. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Now, first, always on display was the big feature with iOS 16.2 beta three. I talked about that in the initial what's new video. And if we go to display and brightness settings, go down to always on display, you'll see that I have show wallpaper turned off. I've been trying to see if this made a difference with battery. And if I go to the always on display, the wallpaper completely disappears. This is the way I think it should look. Not everyone is going to like this, but I'm sort of familiar with that. I'd like to see some more customization in the future where they move the clock down to maybe the middle, or maybe we have some more custom layouts there. They continue to improve it. So I expect them to continue to improve it as well with maybe some more options as well. Now with notifications and your daily summary, you can now swipe that away. You'll see it's collapsed. I can swipe and clear it off the screen. If we go into it, we can press the X and clear it right away. So that's much nicer than it not allowing us to do anything before we can just swipe it off the screen now. So it's great that they've made that available since beta two. Now, if we go into podcasts, there's something that's new. Now this was also there with beta two, but I didn't see it before. If we go into this podcast in the upper right, it says follow instead of just having a little plus button. That's also there since beta two, it's not on iOS 16.1.1. So I thought I'd mention it. Now, some people going into the home app for the first time on beta three are seeing a new splash screen. I didn't get this initially on my main device, but I have it on a different device and it says control your home. Also set it and forget it and then share access. So it's just giving you some more features that are available within home. Now with watchOS 9.2 beta three, there's a feature we've been waiting for. And if we go into the action button here, that brings us to our workouts. If you use outdoor run a lot or outdoor cycle, you'll now be able to race against yourself on the same path. So if maybe you do a path regularly, you go around that path with your bike, then you want to race against yourself. Those options are now available. If you use them regularly, you can see what they look like here from Apple. And it looks like that will be available with 9.2 when it releases to the public. Now satellite connectivity was released this week. I did a video about that where you can go and test that out yourself under settings. If you want to see that you can just go to emergency SOS, go to the bottom, and then you can try a demo of it. However, you can also share your location within find my not many people saw this and I did share it in the separate video I made, but if we go into find my, if we tap me in the bottom, right and scroll down a little bit, you'll see it says my location via satellite. Now it's not currently available. That's because I have cellular and Wi-Fi connectivity. However, if I didn't have that, I'd be able to send my location to someone I would want to know where I am. So if we go into this, you'll see it says send location via satellite, sending your location via satellite is available whenever there is no cellular or Wi-Fi networks and you have a SIM installed. You can't send your location via satellite now because you appear to have other networks available. So if I didn't have those available, I'd be able to send that information. So that's a great feature to have. It's only on the iPhone 14 models, all of them though, the 14, 14 plus 14 pro and 14 pro max. Now within iOS 16.2 beta three, Apple gives us some release notes. We can see in the feedback app and you'll see that they've resolved some issues with health health kit, and then they have some known issues for Freeform and stage manager. I went over those in more detail with the initial what's new video. However, it appears from some people that an exchange sync error has been fixed. So I had reports of people saying exchange wasn't syncing properly. And apparently that's resolved in this update as well. Now, also one thing I wanted to mention was a new style release that Apple released this week. And I did a separate video about it, but if we go into settings and then we go to about within about, we now have a new type of update. That's a rapid security response update. 
Now this was later revealed to be not really a security update, but more of a test. So some information came out on Twitter talking about that, where it looks like there's not much in this file, but it is a test that apparently they're trying just to see how it installs overall. So this is great for future updates where people will get these sort of security responses and bug fixes instead of having to install a full update. In the video, I install it in real time and it takes under 30 seconds for a full install. So hopefully the final versions or the full versions actually install the exact same way. So that's really great. We're going to get those probably very soon, maybe once iOS 16.2 releases to the public. Now, before we talk about more different things, as far as the overall experience, I did want to mention Apple's black Friday deals. So if we go to Apple, you'll see they have Apple shopping event from November 25th to the 28th, where you can get an Apple gift card when you buy an eligible product. If we get an early look, you can see here, this may not pertain to every country. It may only be the United States, but it says for a limited time, get an Apple gift card to use on a later purchase. When you buy an eligible iPhone, Apple watch, Mac, AirPods, and more mark your calendars and our special shopping event kicks off on November 25th. So you can get a $50 gift card with an iPhone, get up to $75 Apple gift cards when you buy AirPods pro second generation and others. And then there's deals with Apple watch for $50 gift cards, iPad, $50 and $250 with a Mac up to. So it depends on which version you buy, but you can see this now on apple.com, but I just wanted to share it so you could check it out. And the other thing I wanted to mention is why you should buy an iPhone 14 pro or pro max. Now these have been pushed back over and over. However, there's alternate ways to get that. So first let's go into the Apple store app. And if we go to shop and then we scroll down, we'll go to iPhones here. We'll go to iPhone. They've sort of buried the pro and pro max because they're in such high demand. You'll see here. If we just go down, we'll select, well, let's select the pro max scroll down. It says order today delivers December 28th. So that's after Christmas. So definitely look into this now. However, I had a friend that actually just was able to pick his up today from T-Mobile and he ordered it the other day. So if you're in the United States trying to get one of these, you may want to go through your carrier. He had a deal where he was able to trade in his phone, his old phone for a thousand dollars. He used a pro max phone, but he was able to trade it in for up to a thousand dollars toward that new phone. So be sure to check out your local deals, whether it's T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, or someone else. Now, before we talk about some bugs in this week's beta, Craig Federighi, who's the senior vice president of Apple software, actually recently admitted to someone that the current beta program doesn't provide the interaction and influence many users desire. So they're aware that sometimes they're missing issues or sometimes just the interaction of letting people know what's in the betas or what's going on isn't really what people want. And so hopefully in the future, they'll actually fix this with iOS 16 betas or iOS 17, where maybe they'll tell us more about what they've fixed, what they're aware of, and hopefully provide feedback about that. When there's issues with the iPhone, many of us would just like to know that they're aware of it and they would let us know. That's something I really hope they fix in the future. Now, as far as bugs, there's one thing I haven't heard a whole lot of people talk about, and that's with the iPhone 14 pro and 14 pro max cameras. I talked to someone recently, hopefully I'm saying this properly a shock. He told me that there's some issues with the camera and I was able to duplicate some of these issues. So I took some pictures and you can take a look here where I took pictures of my Mac pro using an iPhone 13 pro and then compared it to the 14 pro max. And you'll see how different the cameras are. When you take the picture initially, it looks fine and then it processes it and looks worse. This is actually an ongoing issue that seems to be in the Apple forums with some long lists of issues. So there's definitely some odd issues with the iPhone 14 cameras. Hopefully that'll be addressed soon, but I've heard more and more people mention this in the comments. And so I wanted to inv investigate it more. If you're having that, let me know in the comments below. Now, as far as the overall bugs, many people say that the lag and issues with scrolling has been improved. However, just today I had that issue where I swipe home and it would stutter. I didn't have it until today. It took a good five days or so for it to show up or four days. And then it showed up again. So now it showed up. I rebooted the phone. It hasn't shown up again. It could be a memory leak error, but in general, even Mac rumors had people reporting how much better beta three is than previous versions of iOS 16, as far as speed and overall lag. So that's great to see. Some people are saying weather is blank where it just doesn't show anything at all. And others are saying notifications are blank. Some users on Reddit actually showed that as well, where 
the notifications just didn't have any information in them whatsoever. I haven't seen that, but some people have. So weather is not showing up for some. It seems to be outside the US, but it could be elsewhere also. And finally, it seems to be smooth and fast, including ProMotion, older devices. Many people just say that it's a much better experience. With the exception of battery life, I've actually had okay battery life, but it's not great. We'll go into battery health and charging, and you'll see I'm still at 100%. And in general, I wouldn't expect that to drop for quite a few months for me, at least for my usage. And yesterday, I had two hours and 35 minutes of screen active time, three hours and nine minutes of screen idle time. Today, three hours and 26 minutes, and then 10 hours and eight minutes of idle time, and used about 40% of my battery. That's not great for me. It's a little bit better than it was. If we go back here, I was getting four hours and using 75% of my battery. So it seems like it's improved over the same amount of time, depending on the day. Today has been much better. However, I wanted to share some battery life from someone else as well. And within Telegram on my server, someone sent over their battery life. This is from Nate on a 13 Pro Max with 99% battery health. He had five hours and 14 minutes of screen on time, 28 minutes of screen off time and used 50% of his battery life. That's charging it overnight, unplugging it in the morning and that's it. So that's really good battery life. Today, he's had two hours and 13 minutes and then 31 minutes of screen off time and used under 25% of his battery. That's what I would expect from an update. So my phone itself, I must have some odd things going on, some apps running in the background, but I'll have to investigate that more. But in general, most people say that battery life is okay, but there are some that say that it's not. Now, as far as future updates, iOS 16.2 beta four, well, going back to last year, I took a look at this because now we're in the holiday season. This coming week, this Thursday is Thanksgiving in the United States, celebrating our thanks for the nation and everything we have. And typically Apple doesn't release an update, even though they released one week after week with beta three. So looking at last year, iOS 15.2 beta three released on November 16th, and then they didn't release another update until December 2nd with beta four. And then the final release came out on the 13th. So we could have a couple weeks between betas now. So beta three could be more stable for a while. Then we'll see beta four, maybe in a couple weeks. But again, Apple changes this up usually every single year. So we could see a beta this coming week. We may not, but it is a holiday week for many people. And then December, of course, with Christmas and other holidays will be as well. So the final release I would expect in the second or third week of December, and then iOS 16.3 betas in January. That's typically what Apple does year over year. So it should slow down a little bit during the holiday season and then speed back up. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what you had to say in the YouTube community poll. So we'll reload it here and you'll see here at the time of this video, there's 11,000 votes and 110 comments. Now I did go back through those and most people have a positive experience. 17% are on iOS 16.2 beta three, 70% of you have stayed on the, the public version of iOS 16.1.1 or older, 5% are on 15.7.1 or older, 1% are on 14.8 or older, and 6% are using Android. That number has actually gone down a little bit. Now let's take a look at a few comments. Ahmed AW said, I'm on iOS 16.2 beta three on my iPhone 14 pro max, and it works fine. I just wish they'd add added scheduled for the always on display to be on and off and it will be perfect. You can sort of do that with a focus mode with sleep where it will just shut it off altogether. So if you wanted it off at night, you could just use a sleep mode otherwise, and just leave on always on display. Jay Scobie says still on iOS 16.0 on iPhone 13, no issues or bugs and battery life is good. That's a bit surprising to me. And I would personally definitely upgrade to 16.1.1 just for security updates alone. There's some vulnerabilities in there that are pretty serious that I would definitely update for. Right guy said iPhone 14 pro max on iOS 16.2 beta three with the security response phone often force closes apps and becomes unresponsive battery drains just from thinking about it. And Wi-Fi stopped dropping randomly running iOS 16.2 beta three on my iPhone 11 16.1.1 was horrible on my battery life. So decided to go to the betas much improved, but would never tell anyone to do this as a result may vary loving iOS 16 and love your video. Keep it up there. Thank you. What Chala Tech said, I'm using iOS 16.2 beta three on my iPhone 13 pro max battery has been great. No lag or app crashes and ProMotion has been very smooth, much better than both iOS 16.1 and 16.1.1. Can't wait for beta four. So that's everything with iOS 16.2 beta three. 
If there's anything else you found in it that I didn't mention, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And also hopefully we see beta four this coming week, but I'm not really hopeful we'll see that as that's not typically the way it goes. But again, let me know what you think about that. If there's anything else you'd like included in this update that I don't normally include on the weekends, I'd love to hear from you. Maybe we'll change this up a bit as far as comments and more. Again, let me know what you think about that in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.